episode 93, sponsored by Ready Lab Premium T-Shirts. Tonight we got Frederick Dubois, Quebec Pro, and Sifu Patrick Marcel, owner of Patino MMA. Let's do it. Hello, folks. How are you? Welcome to episode 93, sponsored by our friends at Ruddy Lad. Check them out online at ruddylad.com. Uh, the Homer Premium T-shirts, you may have seen them on Dragon's Den. Check them out, uh, made in Canada, and a great sponsor here at Fight League Atlantic. Got a great episode for you today, folks. Uh, two, uh, I guess, first, uh, uh, the second athlete we're going to bring on, he's a, he's a pro MMA athlete um, out of Montreal. But let's get into it first with uh, a guy in, in Canada who's really making a name for himself for a long time now. Since 1994, he opened a gym, uh, and now he's you know with Dave LeDuc, Julian LeBlanc, uh, Marc Andre Barreau, um, Zachary Powell, Sergio um, uh, Denk. Hold on, I don't want to get too into it. I'm going to start butchering names here, but you know he's got a stable mate, a, a crazy, crazy gym, uh, kind of blowing up there. They've been working really, really hard behind the scenes to to get fights, and they're really, really a pleasure to deal with. Uh, a couple gyms now in Canada, and. Uh, you know, a, a name to watch for coming up here in uh, Canadian MMA with a lot of really, a lot of studs on the roster. Uh, and uh, let's talk to him. Let's bring him on without further ado. Uh, Mr. Sifo Patrick Marcel, how are you, sir? I'm very good. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, My pleasure. As I said there in the intro, you know, you guys are, man, it's a, it's a really powerful club with a lot of really great names. Uh, you know, the, you've been at this a hell of a long time. You fought yourself back. You know, we won't. We can get into that if you like. But you know, uh, back in in nineteen nineties and stuff. But left yeah. way is is a big thing for you. Um, mm -hmm. How did you get into martial arts? Uh, I got into martial arts uh, at a very young age, nine years old when I started. Uh, a good friend of mine who's exactly my same age as me. His dad was my instructor for over thirty five years. Mm -hmm. um, he got me into it. I used to. I came up from a fighting family. Like all my uncles used to be in wrestling, boxing. So I always enjoyed like fighting and scrapping and stuff like that. So when we're in school, we're always in getting in trouble, me and him. And he said, hey, my dad's <laughs> going to do classes for kids because uh, he only taught 16 years and up uh, back then, like in 1985. So uh, he said he's going to start a kid's class for his kids to do martial arts. So then he said, oh, you should come. And I went. And for me, it was like a perfect fit. Uh, never stopped. So I still to this day, I train every day. I just did a class. I'm going to do a fight team after this. So for me, it's uh, it was a way of life that, uh, you know, uh, my instructor used to say you're born to do something and i think this mm. is what i was born to do you know to train and to coach and to pass on this passion uh, that i have for martial arts so uh, for me it's been like a life a lifelong journey and i'm i'm still enjoying it awesome that's very great to hear like you know not a lot of people in life can say that you know to be happy and do what they love but also from yeah. a very young age know that so it's very mm -hmm. uh, interesting to hear that and i always i'm always interested to see your pictures you're always smiling you have a great big smile on all the time and, th and that shows cool. right like if you're yeah. happy man you know i'm sure other people yeah. will be like ah no 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 but <laughs> but you know if your passion is key yeah absolutely uh i find it really uh, sad when people you know hate their job hate what they're doing hate everything around them it's uh, mm -hmm. an energy that's a vicious cycle so for me being able to you know to live off my passion and to share mm -hmm. that with other people who want to go somewhere with this and whether I help out a guy who wants to do a fight or most people that come into the school, you know, to get fit and mm -hmm. have self-confidence and enjoy themselves, have fun. Uh, for me, all those are, are good, uh, are good reasons to come and train. And uh, I love to, to, you know, to share what I know. And uh, usually mm -hmm. I smile when we're winning, when we lose, I don't have a big smile. Nah. But, uh, <laughs> I try to have that. Uh, I try to keep that one off Facebook and social media, but no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I enjoy myself and, I think it's important, especially now, you know, all the, the stuff we're having with lockdowns yeah. and pandemics, it, it would be easy to be disappointed and to be, you know, go in a depression mode and uh, not do anything. But I that's mm -hmm. what I try to talk to the guys right now, you know, stay positive, good things are coming. And uh, so I try to have that, uh, that outlook all the time, you know, that something better is coming and there's a reason for everything. Well, that's super important because, you know, you're the coach. Like, you know, I know there's yeah. a few, there's a few coaches at your, at your club, yeah. but you know, like, whether some people don't realize how important of a role that is and how many people mm -hmm. I remember when I first got in, into martial arts, you know, and just walked into a club and as green as can be. And I started when I was 27, I'm a brown belt in jujitsu. I'm not a kickboxer. I I'm like, I'm not like very good at it at all. But I remember going into a club and how important it was. Like I looked at coaches and you're like, Oh my, these people are God. They really yeah. are like to yeah. some people. Right. And it's, you have a huge impact. 
So if you're depressed and you're negative and you have a bad attitude, I think it will show into your school, into your groups, whether it be the fighters or just the average person who comes into your gym, you know, after their, mm -hmm. their day of work, they don't want to go somewhere where it's all negative and boring totally. and yeah. people argue. So for me, I try to make it a very positive atmosphere in the school. And for the guys fighting right now, it was, it's, been, it's been a hard six months, I think. It's been hard for everybody, mm -hmm. including promotions who want to put on shows. Yeah. So uh, I think we need to have a bit more positive stuff and everybody works together and, you know, use this time, extra time to work even harder and be in better shape when it's uh, when it's time to go. I love that. I think that's so important. And I love hearing that from people like who are who are involved at a high level like yourself in the sport who've been at this for a hell of a long time. Because there's some people that have been at the sport for a long time who don't necessarily have that attitude. We both know no. that. And if man, the, like this sport, it's like I, I often compare it for me. It's to like gentlemen's hockey. I go there to see my buddies and have a laugh. Like I'm mm -hmm. not a great competitor. I compete, but I, I'm, I'm my records like yeah. one in like 27 or something. Like I'm not, I go there to have a good time and laugh yeah. and, and enjoy being around my coaches and friends. And, and that's the way I equivalent. And to me, if I had to go to a gentleman's hockey and get in a fight and, and hated it all the time, I probably wouldn't go. Yeah, absolutely. Most people are not going to go into a ring and fight. You know, you'll have a very small percentage of students who actually want to want to do even an amateur fight. So to only focus on the fighting, the fighting, the fighting, I think you're going to miss a big part uh, of the, the benefits of martial arts. Mm -hmm. And as an instructor and as a coach, I think you need to, uh, some guys need to be, you know, have a little extra kick in the butt for discipline. And some yeah. of them, well, you know, they always have ups and downs in life. So I think we're there to help them out and guide them as well, whether it be technically or sometimes just be a, a good mentor and a good person yeah. so they, they, they can look up to you. So Certainly. that's how I, I grew up. So I try to do the same thing with them now as much as I can. Yeah, that's very important. That's that traditional martial arts, you know, like I know yeah. my coaches are very much like that. Like I, I've leaned on my coaches a lot, like for whether it's personal growth or just net, yeah. like to, to nag them for to complain about something. They've always <laughs> been there and good people. Right. And that's what a coach, Perfect. almost like a, a brother or a family. Right. And exactly. How, what do you see the difference between like now and when you started? What's the biggest thing that you uh, know that's, that's different? I think just the, the 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 size and the the opportunities that that these young guys have now, mm -hmm. right? The ability to the ability to train like the, a lot of different places, to travel, uh, to like for like say like David Duke to go into Myanmar mm -hmm. and to, to you know not get kidnapped by pirates and to be <laughs> you know you know that I, I always compare this the, the first time Dave went there, I said you remember the last one of the Rambo's? That's where Rambo has to go. You know <laughs> he has to go to Burma to get these. These people that are stuck there, and it's like, oh, don't go there, you know. And you're going there to fight, you know. They're in the national sport. Yeah. So when you know, 25 years ago, you would never thought, hey, I'm going to go to Burma or all these people going to Thailand or all these um, these venues. No, now you can fight amateur. There's grappling competitions, kickboxing yeah. competitions. There's a, you know, they they want to do a lightweight amateur championships in uh, in Europe. So there's a ton of opportunities for these young guys who want to do a career out of it. I think. 25, 25 years ago, it, been, it was hard to do a career out of this, mm. you know, and to make money and to make a living and to fight regularly close to your, to where you live. You know, you had to travel, you had to fight for literally peanuts. So sponsorships now, you know, you're going to yeah. get big sponsors. Back then, it was almost a joke, you know, you're going to get sponsored by a, a strip club or, a, <laughs> you know, a car dealership and you're going to have that on your back. It's going to be very, it, the opportunities they have for sponsorships, fights, events is huge. Uh, YouTube, social media, uh, Fight Pass, uh, all that stuff is uh, awesome. So sometimes I tell the guys, you know, if you're not excited about all the opportunities you have, you're in the wrong, you know, you're not doing your passion, you're not, something's wrong, because you're supposed to be excited with all this, all this stuff you guys get to do and get yeah. to experience. So I think it's, uh, it's exciting for them to have all these different venues and opportunities to, to succeed in combat sports. Yeah, very again, very well said. I, th I think that's something we take for granted a lot in life is opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like I, I myself have had a lot. I've been gracious enough in my life to have a lot of great opportunities. And it's funny sometimes you can overlook it and you're like, ah, oh, what a shitty day you had, or whatever. But like, if you think about how lucky you are to have an opportunity, it's like even you said, like a lot of these fighters are jumping on planes to go fight in England for a weekend yep. or exactly. whatever, right? And they have sponsorships like. A lot of times people are making more money sponsorship wise than they are making from the fight. Mm -hmm. and that's for sure. For me, comparing to before, it was uh, <laughs> this is uh, 
very exciting for them. So it's uh, like I'm happy for them as well because now they have, uh, you know, when we used to train, it was almost like you're training really hard in case somebody attacks you like in the street, you know, like I, yeah. I was a bouncer when I was young. So you're training for almost more for that than, you know, I've got a competition coming up, you know, we're training for. And my instructor used to say, you know, we're training like Marines, but there's no war. <laughs> now they have, you know, you want a lot of opportunities there's a lot of ways, you know, you can do grappling competition, kickboxing competitions, you can do left way, you can do Muay Thai, you can go do MMA, and there's a lot of good organizations. So mm -hmm. I think it's exciting for them to, to have a, a goal to go to compared to before. It was kind of you're hoping that something's going to happen or somebody's going to yeah. call you. So um, it's uh, it, I'm happy for them because they, they should be – now they're getting paid a bit more. I think there's a big thing with the paying as well. I think yeah. when you're fighting for a living, you should wow. be making – if you're a pro, you should be able to live off – you know your your pro career whether you're in the ufc or not you know yeah. and unfortunately it's not there yet but uh all the time these guys put in and the risks they take and uh, the entertainment value they put out they should be making you know at least uh a decent not, living that you just you know, equal to working at the government at least no you know. question about it like <laughs> it's if it I, I don't understand it i don't know how i don't get it like i look at our promotion and like we're a small promotion yeah you know, like we did, we we did all right in our first event. We had a lot of first time costs. So then you look at the UFC and you understand that their costs, but it's like, guys, like come on, what's going yeah, somebody's on? Somebody's making somebody's making profit for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the wrong damn. Yeah. I have the wrong <laughs> FLA is not UFC. <laughs> the no. wrong three letters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, like I guess I wanted to ask you about that. You know, the Quebec MMA scene. Obviously, TKO is kind of on hiatus. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. I don't know if anybody knows. Um, no, no, I don't think so. No, like, and you've been involved with Fight Quest, which is another uh, yeah. great, great, great promotion. Yeah, very. Um, good. What's what's going on there? Like, how's the Quebec scene going to fold out? Um, since TKO went under, uh, it's been hard. It'll, it was going really well. Like, I can't say anything. Like, the yeah, production value of TKO well. was awesome. If Amazing. you look at the, you know, the last two years, who's been fighting at TKO, and now a lot of a couple of uh, TKO alumni are getting a shot at Contender Series uh, this mm -hmm. summer. Uh, guys who fight at TKO have obviously went on to, to having good careers. So the quality and the caliber was high. Mm -hmm. It was exciting for us. You know, the last show they did was in Gatineau, you know, and had six yeah. guys fighting on the card. And it was uh, awesome as far as the energy in the city here, having those six guys uh, fighting yeah. on the card and the people cheering. And the, it was it was awesome. But it was uh, I, I didn't know it was going to be the last one. So it's yeah. unfortunate there. So that's been the last one. Fight Quest should start over soon with the pandemic going on and the – Quebec government, you know, saying no to sports, uh, combat sports for a little while until yeah. they, they settle things. But uh, I got a couple of good amateurs that want to go back to, to you know, compete at Fight Quest, which is an excellent uh, amateur promotion to, to get mm -hmm. experience. Very good caliber fighters there, well organized. And as far as the Quebec scene, it's been up and down all the time, right? So it's been either like full blast or nothing at all. So uh, no. for us, you know, we're, we're going to travel. We're going to do what we can to get the guys fights. And uh, we're at that step now. So uh, it's kind of a... Uh, we're going, I don't know what's going to happen with the Quebec scene, but there, I know there's a lot of fighters here in Quebec that need to fight. So uh, I'm not worried that the guys I'll, uh, I'll fight and we'll find, we'll find the guys fight, whether it be my guys or other guys as well. Yeah, I think we could make a Quebec fight league in, in the Maritimes for Quebec fighters yeah, only. Pretty sure, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. The amount of people <laughs> have contacted us to fight, it's, it's great. And it's interesting yeah. to me how, like, you know, the, the scene was set. Like for all of you guys who are involved in martial arts at a high yeah. level, and then then you have GSP, obviously, and, you know, realistically, I don't know, it's 2020. When did like, so say, let's just say 20 years now, like we'll just give or take. The government's known about this. Like the, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like deep down, like this is going to be a big sport. And now you look at how many athletes right now are out of an opportunity in Quebec alone. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's yeah. nuts to me. And it's frustrating, huh? But yeah. That's one of the reasons uh, it ended up well, though. Like Dave had to leave because there was no, you know, like professional Muay Thai or professional striking, which is what he wanted to do. There was nothing like that, pretty much, you know, and having the opportunity to go to Thailand and the prison fight then the letway fight. So it ended up being positive for him that we that he was able to do that. But it's it's uh, frustrating, I find. Even now boxing, you know, they're saying, oh, we're no boxing in Quebec until they find a vaccine. And I'm like, man, there's some of these guys, that's what they do for a living. And the yeah. promotions like I had a tiger, Jim, you're yeah. affecting a lot of people. Like I went to the UFC with Marc Andre and the way they, 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 they structured everything, I think it's easily duplicable and doable for like smaller promotions or to work mm -hmm. with the, the commissions. I think it's doable. It's not something that costs, you know, a hundred thousand to do COVID tests and 
those mm. little guns that take your temperature in the morning, I don't think they're 50 grand each. So uh, it's I think it's cool, I, but it's frustrating. It's super frustrating. Our proposal, you know, our proposal is 23 pages long, is 23 pages long. Wow. It covered everything, you know, like we, we only based it on 50 people in the venue seating wise and in and, and bulk seats of 10. These people, they, you know, a book, a book yeah. of 10, they had all sit together in five different sections of the venue. Man. And it was, we had everybody arriving and just very similar to the UFC, right? Yeah. And uh, just nothing. So, so it's, everybody loses when that happens. You know, you guys yeah. lose the, the, the people who want to build their career and fight. Or some of the older guys, you know, that are doing this because they love it. You know, and they're, yeah. I don't know, 37, 39. They're saying, okay, I'm going to do it another year. And now they lose that year, you know, for, yeah. so I, I find that uh, unfortunate for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. I've actually spoke to a couple guys, you know, who, who were like, you know, I just might hang it up. Yeah. I just, you know, I don't know if, you know, if fighting's good. Because my concern about it coming back is what, like, the you know, you know, commissions are not easy to deal with in the first place. No. But how, how are they going to come back now? Is it going to yeah, be tenfold? Is it going to be like... Yeah, it's, nice. uh, and they, there's not a lot of big line of communications as far as, okay, are you giving us updates? What's going on? Uh, yeah. Even like for around here, uh, Ontario and Quebec, they don't allow, you know, like a pro-am show, like the amateur card would be uh, yeah. the, the opening of the show, then pros after, right? like you do out west, like we went to a prestige yeah. fighting championship a few years back. That was, I thought it was awesome. The States, they do that. I'm not sure if they do that uh, close yeah, to where you're by. Pro-am as well. That's, I think that's an awesome format. To yep. do pro am, I don't know why in Quebec and in Ontario they have never allowed that. That's it uh, blows my mind. And sure. just the amateur scene, you know, we have to go to, you know, the the the, uh, the Native American territories. You can't do it like in Ottawa, like we used to, or yeah. it's and you did never get any updates. So it's uh it's a bit frustrating where you find out that kind of combat sports is uh, not important. That's how you feel sometimes, you know. That uh, it's not hockey, it's not important around here. So. Uh, I, uh, I have a hard time with that being, uh, you know, a martial artist all my life. I, I'd rather do the martial arts and hockey. I wouldn't care if there's hockey or not, but uh, a lot of people <laughs> don't share my opinion. No, um, I know. It's, yeah, it's, it's, I'm exactly the same. It's frustrating. And I don't want to shit on our commission by any means. The commission out here, you know, but when I say hard to deal with, you know, I'm also, we're learning too, and we're hard to deal with too, I'm sure. So, yeah, yeah. but at the end of the day, they helped us pull off a great event. And, but they're, you know, it's like they said to us, you know, our, the very first fight of the night, it got stopped by a cut. And here I was sitting cage side. And I'm like, what's going on? What? You're, you're stopping that? That's a fight. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Exactly. And they're like, what are you talking about? You come yell at us again, you're going to lose your license. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I have no <laughs> say in this. So I guess I better just leave. So I just yeah. had to leave, right? A learning lesson for me. Yeah. Like, Shut your mouth. You don't own. You don't run anything. You're just a clown. No. And this is the unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right, man. So, well, anyway, I, uh, I, uh, I got to ask you a couple questions just before I let you go. Go for you uh, experience about uh, you know with Dave. You know, Dave obviously is you know an internationally well known athlete. You know, pretty yep. well known, famous almost. I guess he would be famous at this point. A famous. Yeah, he's getting athlete. there. He's working yeah, on it. <laughs> he definitely is. Do you think there's, you know, you you went over uh, with him and uh, yep. cornered him in those fights. You've also went to the UFC. You've uh, yep. been in other promotions. What's the biggest difference you noticed between all three? Um, the biggest difference will be, uh, I would have say, the crowd and the the way, that, like in Myanmar, like I've said this before in other interviews, uh, people over there, like, you know, you go to a UFC. Uh, the last UFC wasn't like that because there was no crowd, right? It was yeah. very about... <laughs> I enjoyed that because it was uh, purely about the fight. You know, there wasn't anybody there that was just there to party or to, yeah. to look at the girls or to, you know, have you seen, you, we all go to events and most of yeah. it, you ask them about the fights, they haven't even watched one fight. They just went for the party, you know, like people yeah. do that at hockey, football. But in uh, the last UFC, it was only about the fight. It was very pure between, you know, Marc-André and his opponent, the other opponent. So I enjoyed that part, knowing there's people watching on TV, but there's no distraction in the crowd. In Myanmar, there it's uh, usually there's no alcohol, uh, no yeah. phones, so Dry. everybody is there to watch the fight actively from the beginning to the end. So every punch, they all stand up and they yell every little shot. So there's you no, know, you have five, six thousand people in the in this the, in the arena, but they're all focused solely on the fight. They're not there to party. They're not there to drink. They're they're there to watch the fights and they 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 know about fighting. You know yeah. that's a that's a so that atmosphere makes it very 
it was cool for me. I think it was cool for the athletes as well because you find that you're going almost like a gladiator arena like in the old Roman times where everybody's fixed on, you know, what's going to happen. They're not, you know, half passed out because they've been drinking or they're on their phone texting or they're, yeah. they, they were, they, well, I was at the bar for the three fights. I missed my friend, uh, yeah. all that stuff. They're very focused on the fight and they, everybody stands up. They sit back down. They, and that atmosphere was um, very intense. So I Whoa. enjoyed that that part and uh it would be fun here imagine if you'd have you know the 15 or twenty thousand mm. people and they're all focused on the fight not yeah. just you know on the partying and the, the the energy so it's a bit different uh than in some of the other fights i've been to you know like the auto you have seen auto one when he was here i asked a few people oh how did you join the fight i missed half of them you know i was oh, oh my god <laughs> you know they, they were just there uh, they were there for the atmosphere which is yeah. fine but sure. for me uh, i enjoy the fight so uh, that was a big difference there and it's for them, let way over there. It is literally a religion, so it's uh, a. Yeah. It is. It is a. Uh, it's extremely popular. You know, they had thirty or forty million people watching it uh, on TV, the fights, and everywhere you go. So it's uh, it's al almost like the only sport and the only thing they have, which mm. brings them a lot of pride as far as uh, something that they've done and it's been there for a long time. So that was interesting. But the UFC special, uh, I've been to one Bellator uh, match as well. Uh, TKO was fun. Like every venue I go to, that's a pro event. I enjoy because it's always different, and uh, I enjoy the process of going to the ring with my, you know, my fighters that we work together. I enjoy to see their process and their progression, you know, to where yeah. we're going to go and if it's his last fight and it's no, he's only doing this uh, for himself. I want it to be like uh, the best, uh, the best experience possible. So, I've enjoyed all of them, but uh, the biggest thing in Neymar is the the focus of the crowd, why they go compared to a little bit here. Yeah, the party's that different. Ed, the education, the, the crowd's yeah. groomed, you know, like, like yeah. you said, there's a certain respect to, I think, exactly. you know, in it, it's like, I look back at our first event, I, like I was sitting there and I was like, looking around, there's so many fights in the crowd, like oh, the, yeah. they were busy, like, and it was the first event, you know, an uneducated crowd when it comes to martial arts, you know, yeah. um, more so just excited, you know, that kind of thing. And I thought it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting to see how many fights were actually yeah. in the crowd, man. I never Jesus. would have thought of that. Yeah, no, a lot of brawls. Been a, it's been a while I haven't been to an event with a lot of fights in the crowd yet. Oh, man, yeah. I'll keep that, that in mind when I when we go to your event. I'll have to watch myself so I don't get hit in the back of the head with a bottle or something. A bottle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, I think it's... It was February, you know, middle of winter. Everybody was shacked up. Yeah, yeah. Ready, ready to, <laughs> ready to. Yeah, it was a it was a hard winter out here for sure, as we all know. But uh, well, before I let you go, one uh, one last question: How how's everything been with COVID? You know, you guys coming out of it okay up there? Uh, yeah, we've been able to like me and Gatno have been open for three weeks, and uh, we've reopened some of the classes as far as like you know like striking and some of the self-defense classes, but uh, we haven't been, we haven't done like any of the grappling, all the no-gi. The fighters, uh, Marc-André was, came down to do like a month of camp with us just before UFC in the middle of COVID. So we had to train yeah. in the day. We trained in the day a little bit, like, you know, me, Dave, Julien, Dave, uh, Marc-André, a couple of other guys, who's like selective guys that could help mm -hmm. him in his camp. And we closed the doors, had the, the, everything was shut down. We're doing a little bit, okay, you go out first. Okay, then you go out in five minutes. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, you know, different hours. So we're just trying to be as, uh, Smart, you know, though. as safe as possible. And we did the whole camp like that. And then we did all the, the stuff we filmed and everybody who came to see us, we all put it up on Facebook after, you know, That's after the fight and after we were done. So, okay, we're done. You can't come and see us anymore. So I wasn't yeah. sure if, you know, if somebody would have come, if they would have uh, complained, but we, we had to train, you know, we're going to a UFC fight. So right yeah. now we're just, I'm, I might, I'm like, I think I'm operating about 50% as far as uh, the regular classes and members. And some people are still afraid, you know, of uh, yeah. they want to wait a little bit to see if, you know, everybody at the gym is getting COVID or, or not. Mm. So I'm keeping the communications with my members uh, open and, you know, everything's on, uh, you know, if they need to ask me something, we did a lot of cleaning, a lot of washing, lots of uh, Purell going around. And uh, trying to make the the most of it, you know, I'm just happy that we're able to to restart a little bit and waiting. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, another month we'll be able to go back to to normal. Yeah. Hopefully, the real right. normal, not the mask normal and the, the, the not the new normal. I like the old normal. Yeah, I'm not into this new normal shit that everyone no, keeps talking about. You know, like it's I'm not I'm not I'm you know. Anyway, that's a that's a another conversation for a drink and, and not on a podcast. <laughs> no, <I think. laughs> yeah. no. All right, man. Well, uh, last question. Any advice for, you know, you've been at this a hell of a long time. 
you know, for, for new gym owners, for gym owners out there struggling, you know, to make the decision, should they keep going? Should they hang it up? You know, any advice for people like that? For me, if it's a, uh you have that passion, you know, that fire that you want to help people and you want to train and you want to work. It's not an easy business, right? So there's a lot of expenses, you know, with having a gym, if you have a lot of students, you can't have, you know, I think a, a thousand square feet. If you want to, it's expensive to run a gym. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy. So uh, for me, um, I would say to make sure that to have, have good people around you, you know, like I have good assistants, instructors, if I need help that are there to help me out. Uh, of course, we're all like the Pat Note family. My, uh, my brother-in-laws are always there when we need, you know, to talk to each other. What should we do? What, what's mm -hmm. the next goal? It's good to talk to people who are in the same boat as you going the same, the same direction, the same way. So we get the, mm -hmm. we mastermind, we chat be between each other and we come up with solutions or, you know, we resolve stuff together. So it's better when I find it's good to have people around you to mentor you, to help you and to be just yeah. to know, okay, am I doing the right thing? Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. And, and to ask people, you know, so that kind of stuff is important. So they need help. You know, they need to have people around them that, you know, they're going, they're where you you want to be, or they're going the same direction as you yeah. uh, and to have good people around you. You know, if, like we talked about earlier, if you have a, everybody's negative, everybody's telling you to not go there. So I think you need to have good people that can give you good advice on, uh, you know, some schools might have to, instead of closing completely, you know, like shrink, maybe the expenses, shrink the gym yeah. a little bit, focus on, you know, your most serious people, that kind of stuff is, uh, there's always options compared to like completely like, same thing for fighters, you know, the, the guy might be, that's it. I'm calling it quits. Well, you know, take six months, relax a little bit, maybe start training again in six months. You might have the fire again and, you know, fight again. You know, a lot of the guys in the UFC now are in there yeah. close to getting in their forties and they're still competing at the high level, you know? So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say no to anything, but, uh, I make sure to have, I think that the a support system and good people around you are going to help you make good decisions. So, uh, that be my advice. advice. If, if you're alone, you know, get some people that you trust and that are there to help you. Not, uh, not the opposite, you know, not those uh, friends yeah. that are real good people around you. Even if it's uh, sometimes it's good to have a second Everything. opinion. Yeah, yeah, it's it's true. You know, it's at the end of the day. You know, whether <laughs> I often find in this world people get jealous when others do well. Yeah, you know, okay. and it, and, and, and oh, it, yeah. Sh it shouldn't be like that. You know, no. you should. If someone's doing well, you should be like, how can I be like that? Absolutely. You know, and ask advice. How did like, that's how it's, how do the, how do we start the podcast? I yeah. do some research, ask some people, watch some YouTube videos. I, I've had people reach out to me. Fighters are like, I want to start my own podcast. And I've asked a few people, but no one will help me. And I'm yeah. like, what? Like no one will help me. No one will tell me what to do. And I'm like, well, all right, here's like six. I just talked to you for 30 seconds and pretty simple, Perfect. you know, but yeah. it's, it's important. It's, uh... it's important to help one another, man. Yeah, unfortunately, that's and martial arts is uh, guilty of that for sure. With uh, you know, there's an ego, and you know, people have a hard time to help each other out, or to, the, the jealousy and the the it's bad. Yeah. But uh, I think if people work together, uh, everybody else, there's going to be a lot more people with uh, can do this as a career, and a lot more people getting help and enjoying martial arts. So couldn't so agree more. Without yeah, that's a, without uh, man. I couldn't say it better myself. I think that's fantastic advice. Anybody, anybody out there, if you're you know if you're looking for somebody to look up to in this industry, you know, uh, look no further. Uh, check them out online. Where where can they find you? No, uh, they can find me on Facebook, Sifu Pat. I'm on Instagram as well, and uh, I'm easy to find. You know, Pat No Martial Arts in Gatno. So uh, anybody needs anything, they can send me a message, and if I if I have good advice, if I know uh, you know if I have an answer for what they're asking, I'll help them out. Perfect. Awesome. Well, again, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you're a, a guy I've been following for a long time. So hopefully I'll get to meet you in person and uh, that'd be awesome. Up and get my ass kicked from all you guys up there. So <laughs> thanks for all having right. me. All right. Lots of love. Talk soon. Merci. Great guy. Fantastic interview folks. Um, phew, you know, lots of knowledge there and that's, you know, I couldn't give better advice. Well, I, I can't give advice cause I don't run a club. And I never have, but uh, you know, that's, if you're looking to run a club, if you're struggling through running a club, kind of, kind of staying afloat right now, reach out to somebody in the community who, you know, who might be able to help you, you know, don't be scared. Don't be scared to take advice and, and, you know, be a little green in things like, you know, here I'm sitting on a podcast talking to myself in a room, no idea what I'm doing, but I'm doing it right. So at the end of the day, just kind of stretch your boundaries, I guess, and uh, put yourself out there and, you know, fail sometimes, I guess. Anyway, let's get on to our uh, second guest. We're having a little trouble getting them on here, folks. Uh, I'm just going to 
bear with us. Uh, we'll be back live in about 30 seconds. All right, folks, how are you? Welcome back to episode uh, 93, sponsored by friends at Ruddy Lad. Premium t-shirts based in Canada. You may have seen them on Dragon's Den. Fantastic premium t-shirts available online at ruddylad.com. Let's get into our second guest here, folks. He's a pro athlete out of H2O MMA, uh, born in Montreal, Quebec, uh, sponsored by our good friends at Jukido. Not good friends of mine at all, but I, I know he's wearing the t-shirt, so I'm going to rep it anyway. Uh, this guy's a super talented amateur. He, I believe he's six and one as an amateur. He's two and one as a pro. Uh, really, really talented striker, great grappler, and uh, a guy, he's kind of been on a little bit of a layoff now for two years, so it's, I want to chat with him about that and see how he's kind of been affected by this whole COVID thing. And uh, yeah, he's part of that whole H2O team and that whole Montreal group, man. It's a uh, Quebec. I don't know what to say about a bunch of assassins in that goddamn province. Let's bring him on here, folks. Without further ado, Frederick Dupre. How are you, sir? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm good. And you? Thanks awesome. for the conversation. No, Sorry, thank you. It was pretty hard to uh, change a computer very fast and everything. <laughs> you, you did good. I'm, I'm sorry for the issues, man. You did great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I just finished training. Uh, that's it. Like nice. I, keep, uh, I'm, uh, keeping, uh, keep, I keep myself busy and even uh, in the hard time right now. I think everybody is hard. It's, it's hard for the sports right now. It's it's bananas right now. It's it's so hard for our sport right now. It's it's absolutely yeah. foolish. Um, I want to ask you about that, I guess. You know, like you're, you're obviously training at H2O, staying busy. Are you, can, are you able to get any good hard rounds in, like – uh, right now, like, uh, I don't go too much uh, HO, like, it's pretty far from my house because, uh, like, but it's it just like uh, it's in Montreal. I live in Laval, and uh, sometimes it's uh, it's hard to reach. But uh, mm -hmm. right now, I train a lot, uh, uh, a lot with the uh, uni right now. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I like it, it's new for me. And uh, I know he was coming to HO, and uh, we started talking a little bit more. And uh, he's like his gym is near my place, so uh, a lot of time we train uh, like uh, early in the morning. So it's give me time for me, and I have like um, a gym at my place. So I build a, a small gym. So nice. I, I keep myself very like busy. Like uh, I still train uh, two times a day, uh, and um, wow. that's it. And I like I try to put uh, like for sure like if I have something more uh, uh, serious like if i have fight or something i for sure i'm gonna be more uh, with uh, my coach uh, richard but uh, right now like you know like it's it's more time like to just get back in shape still like uh, just like um keep myself busy like uh, keeping it be sharp and everything if something is like uh, for me it's the problem right now like i try to have fights but it don't work like it's complicated my thing is the problem with uh, for everybody but me, well, just like before that, I have like uh, my fight got canceled, like the show, the whole show got canceled, so I didn't yeah. fight. I was supposed to come back, and I was like so, like uh, you know, uh, on fire, ready to go, and like right away when it canceled, I try like to find fights and everything, but it's so hard. Like uh, after the COVID start, it was uh, was shit. <laughs> yeah, it was shit. It still is shit. <laughs> I gotta yeah. say, but it's important. Keep yourself yeah, busy, right? Yeah, but like, uh, 
yeah, I keep myself busy. Like just before the COVID, like uh, since like for me it was a huge year. Like uh, like uh, it's sad for like I really feel it's shit because like for me I was I was gonna return man re return like bad. Like I, I'm I'm gonna go hard. Like I'm gonna take everything nice. I can. I was ready to fight. I know you're a promoter, so like if you want to match me one day, uh, maybe we perfect. perfect. <laughs> Call me anytime. Hey, it's what? like I just said in the last interview, man. Like the amount of talent in Quebec, you can't keep track of all you guys. There's so many yeah. of you right now. It's it's, it's really great. But I think like a lot of time, like um, you know, the, you have like. Uh, you have some diamond everywhere, you know, like uh, in every gym, sometimes you know what they have this guy that you like very, very, very good. And you're like, why, why you don't hear about you? And yeah. everything like that. It's very, it's something uh, strange for me. I keep well, it. Yeah. It's like why I do this podcast. Like how many podcasts out there, all they're doing, they get, uh, jo I don't know, George Mazdaval or whatever. Every day, it's the same shit. He has to say the same yeah. shit every day. It's true. Man, how about let's do some, and it's crazy, all these Canadian reporters covering those guys. So I guess yeah. it takes us as a promotion to give some love to Canada, you know, because yeah. that's the way our country's going to move. We all got to be together and promote one another. Fuck, I don't care who you fight for. As long as you fight, I'm a fan. I'm a promoter, but I'm a fight fan. So I just want you to get fights and move to to a better if you want if you want to make the ufc if i can help you do that man that's great yeah but it's true it, but uh, that's the problem like uh, you you even say it like they have so many talent in quebec but the thing we like right now we don't even have we don't have show right now and uh, we don't know how it's going to go to mm -hmm. so, uh, <laughs> yeah it's, it's hard man it's so you're, hard. you're you're in laval just outside quebec city yeah you love you like the city yeah i like uh, i really like it yeah for beautiful. me like i i i am I'm born here like uh, by laval and montreal it's so close that it's not that like for me like it don't take too much but like it's still like uh you know everybody do their thing now you know like yeah. it's not like a busy group like right now with uni we have a small group and we we will you know, like it's all serious people, so we all train pretty hard, but we are all respecting like the, the distance and everything. Uh, we don't miss nobody. In it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that's good, man. It's well, you're an athlete, you're a professional athlete who's you know on a career uh, like you're, yeah, you have a, a career. Like if yeah. if I was like right now, so if I'm I don't know I don't know how to make an analogy to to what it would be for anybody else but like you can't just give up and stop and be like sorry i'm i'm going to take a year off training to get to the highest level of the sport like but for me it was very hard because but not hard but like the beginning of the quarantine i started like you know just like training in at my place and uh, be very sharp like i was like oh for sure like if something happened now i'm going to be ready but it's hard like to like i'm still at the beginning of the car my career so it, it, I don't have a big record, so it, it's hard to, for me to like uh, someone like ask me to travel, get get paid for traveling and everything. So uh, now, I, like for me, I'm uh, like uh, how I can say a uh, service. Like it's always the same thing. I'm always came back to oh, like yeah, uh, yeah. in a place. circle. Like you're like a yeah. hamster. Yeah, yeah, I know. I feel the same way a lot too, man. I know. Oh, I know yeah. your pain. It's it's frustrating sometimes, you know. Two steps forward, one step back. Yeah. You know, like what what's that like for you? You know, taking taking the, a loss, you know. And now you like you say, you know. I think your last fight was a loss, right? Yeah, but yeah, that's it. Like my last fight, like uh, you you say, is uh, two like two years. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got clipped with a great a good overhand, and I like a pretty bad knockout. And uh, for me, like, like I should touch wood, but everything was well after that. But I just like uh, for the doctor and everything, they say like I should take some time off and everything, because I I was the kind of guy like who never leave the gym and train mm -hmm. way too much. And but right now I like I learn a little bit to train hard, but I, like uh, you know sometimes pass a little bit. But before I was like just 
uh, draining myself. Like I was yeah. going, going hard, like all the time. And uh, but it's it's a mentality. I think it, it, like if you want to be a champion, you have to think like that. Like uh, for me, I was like I have to train like the best to be the best. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's 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 such that I, I I don't know. Like, I'm not an I'm a I, I, I'm a brown belt in jujitsu. I I'm not again. Like I said to Patrick, I'm not a great competitor, um, so I, I don't know the mindset. But like from my aspect, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, you have to be the the best. You have to train like the the best to be the best. And then on the other side, you're like, ah, I should go to Shade Dago Bear for the night, you know, <laughs> or like that kind of thing. It's like I should have some fun. But. Yeah, that's for sure. That's like you know, like that's why I feel like my loss give it to me, uh, give, give it to me. Like uh, you know, like at the, at the end of like my my last my, like my last fight that I lost, mm -hmm. uh, I like I was not enjoying anything. I was like so much into it. Like uh, you know, I was not doing barbecue and everything. So yeah. when I was, I like I enjoy a little bit more myself. Like uh, like I I take a year. And after a year, I try to go back, but the uh, match up and everything, it's hard to like back on. It's pretty hard. But yeah. uh, now a little bit, like I take a little bit more, um, more chill. You know, sometimes sure. like if you need some break before like uh, fight. And even now, I I put myself now a, a bigger uh, um, category, so I, it's going to be even more because I was a big one thirty five, a very very yeah. big one thirty five. You were. Yeah. But it's for me like my I have some bad habits I eat bad and that's my problem. But now like you see like I'm a uni like like I see those guys I we all pro and I see those guys like it, it give me more um how I can say uh, like eat better I try to eat better I try to like uh, try to be lean more look after yourself yeah uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's how old are you? I can't remember. I, yeah. Well, I'm 26 right now. That's why, like, I try to go like faster I can right now. Uh, not even like I, 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 for sure, I would like to go to UFC, but like, uh, I would like to go just in the major league for sure. Like, they have so much good stuff now. PFL, I really like it. The, the one major thing, sure. it's pretty good. Like, it's, I, I like that. For, one, one year, done, retire, done. Yeah. You get, you, know? you get the million, you're done, and you know, like if you spend it well, I think you could have a good, good life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like invest it, invest. Like, uh, like I know lots of people who, you know, like whether it's uh, people I know who played in the NHL or whatever who, like, didn't make huge money, but they invested their money right, you know. And if you invest your money right, you know, yeah, you're gonna live well. That's for sure. That's My father always said to me. He was, he was, he was big in, you know, my parents ran their own company and he, he did a lot of investing because, you know, no pension, no way to make money that way. So he, he looked after his own money and, he, and I always used to complain about the price of things like, ah, oh, this is so expensive. And he said, if you can't beat them, join them. He's like, buy stocks in that company and then get dividends. Anyway, long story short, you make your money back that way. And that's what I started doing. So it's, my, yeah, it's, it's smart that's something like it's something too like i start learning a little bit more you know it, it's it, it's a lot of uh, homework and things like that but like w when after it's like a sparring it's it's so hard that when you start after you have like uh, a strategy and uh, you know skills is everything is going to be good yeah it's a beautiful thing to watch a person like like i, I, I look against your fight against tyler you know, like, man, it's a beautiful thing to watch striking at a high level like that. It really yeah. is. And that only comes with time. Yeah, but it's timing, you know, like, uh, my, you know, sometimes you, you go like uh, in that fight, I just got a knee in the stomach. and I was like, oh, shit. Okay, let's go. I, like, I bring him everything. <laughs> so you just like, okay, let's go. Boom, boom. You try it and it works. Even when I, you know, it's uh, like it was one of the first time like I dropped so like I was used to grapple with people and just like choke mm -hmm. them in the first round and everything. And uh, that time, like I was like, I clip him with, with the first punch I touch, he dropped, and I was like, oh yes, that's good. And after when I see him on the floor, I was like, oh, and it, it was pretty good because like I try to go for his back, yeah. and after he, I I I feel him 
like wake up and be oh shit i, I know it is i start like panicking a little bit so i start like putting more like a uh, in my uh, in my like my world yeah guilty like, yeah, yeah man i that was nice the beautiful the best in the country that's you, you. Uh, there you go that's a clip i'm gonna edit that clip there you go <laughs> best one arm guillotine in the country i yeah. like that I like that. That's good, man. It's important to be confident in your skills. That's oh, one thing I struggle with a lot. Like it's from a, from experience, you know. Like uh, I train with so many people, and and I and a lot of people said to me, like Fred, you have one of one of a hell of a giving it to a gift in man. I, and say so you should. That's a gift. That's something. That's something else. <laughs> that's beautiful to watch, man. Do you, yeah, do you spar? Have you ever spar? Like, because obviously H two O and TriStar. You know. Yeah, I, I I try. I go with TriStar. That's like you know, like uh, that. That's it. Like it give me a, like a lot. I see a lot of people. You know, like it's this yeah, is how I I, I knew. Huh? Have you sparred with Tyler at TriStar? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, did. Funny. Yeah, it's, it's, been funny. A long time. it's been a long time, and uh, you know, like uh, it's different. Like me, I when I go, like I try start, like I I did some of uh, sparring, but I don't do most of my sparring there. I do more like um, pro uh, pro class, and I go there and I do more jiu jitsu there and and things nice. like that. Yeah, nice. yeah. It's such a, it. it's like a giant stable of the best horses in the world, man. Yeah, yeah, but they, like I said, they have diamond everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Me, I'm, I'm kind of guy like I go everywhere. Like I like to like take everything for everybody. Like uh, if you, you can show me something, I go and try to like uh, take it and put it in my game. Like, or right. just, just just change a little bit something and do it in my uh, my my thing. I love that. I think that's so. It's important. You know, there's closed mind people that don't like. You know, like. <laughs> Man, you you can you train everywhere, learn from everybody. You know that's, that's yeah. Important. That that's the, the thing. Like uh, my like I don't like Richard. I have to like the give him that. Like he never tried to stop me to do something or something like that. Like just an uh, example. Like for sure. Like uni. Like you say, oh man, I know Fred. You can train hard, so let's go. Like uh, never have a trouble with him. And yeah. uh, me and Richard like we don't argue we are the same page and i'm a kind of uh, an old guy at the gym now you know like even like mig fall and adam Sako, they were not there before you know uh, like uh, it's uh, like uh, it's a new generation yeah very cool like, uh, i've heard yeah. a lot of good things about richard you know uh, i've never heard a bad thing about him actually <laughs> i don't yeah. think which is great you know everybody's yeah, it's, perspective it's a cool it's a very cool dude and uh, you know like uh he think like he, he, he when he say something he think about it you know like i like that like he, he don't he don't say something for nothing uh, no reason <laughs> when he say something they they have a yeah. lot of uh, meaning behind and a lot of time he have some experience you know like uh, the first time like uh, a lot of time like i don't listen i pay for it like uh, <laughs> even like my my first like uh, pro fight, I almost canceled the fight, the Ty Wilson fight, because I cut the the weight, and after I started eating so bad, and uh, he said, Fred, uh, just before, like, um, <laughs> before the, the, the we we wait, and say, Fred, I know, I know you, you're going to go crazy, and <laughs> so I know if you go, you eat bad and everything like that, you, you're going to suffer, like, it's going to be hard. And right away, if I don't mistake, two hours before the um, the weight cut and everything, I weigh myself. Everything is good. I started eating, and it started jamming. I cannot eat or drink for the next. I think it. I start back eating like at three o'clock, uh, three uh, three three p.m. of the day of the fight. So I was still like almost uh, one forty three when I wake like wake up in the morning, uh, like I, and I cut ten pounds of water. Like it's oh, crazy yeah. because I start cutting like 146, and I, I was like, Oh my god! Like, mm. like, I start like I was at the seven in the morning working in the street, like just try, like, uh, you know, uh, digest things, yeah. but uh, <laughs> jump I, up and down. Yeah, I was like, No, man, I mean, I start calling Richard at the morning. I say, Man, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> what did you but, eat? Man, I think I eat like uh. 
Saint Tobias, and after he eats, eats a lot of cake and uh, not bad. No. Oh yeah, I did. But it's so funny because in amateur, I have one of my fights. Like I eat, like after you know, like uh, Gato McCain. What is it? Uh, it's a like cake you buy in the grocery store. Oh, uh, the McCain? Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah, I yeah. Eat that the uh, the trois quarts, three quarter of it. Oh, and I tried to go back to fight right away, and I finished the guy in 30 seconds. I was like, "All right, I'm I'm good with that." <laughs> That's good luck charm. You have to yeah. get McCain's as a sponsor. Uh, they have one, my friend, like filmed the, the the fight, and he's like, "Man, this guy's crazy. Just eat a gato McCain and just go fight." <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You're just a pure badass, I guess, man. That's but pretty I, impressive. I, I feel good, like um, like a lot of time, like that's. I maybe that's why I go up division because I didn't eat like properly for uh, like uh, a year or something like that. But <laughs> even like some people, sometimes they try, they, they see me eat and they're like, "Oh, for sure, you're not gonna perform tonight." I'm like, "You don't know, me. like." Yeah, yeah. Get out of the yeah, way. I have one bet with someone. Uh, they said to my like he was like uh, like it just show you like it's a experienced jujitsu guy. It's like uh, like a purple belt with a couple of competition and say, "Oh, today, Fred." I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go hard on you, and say uh, I I bet you you cannot eat like you did la last week and uh, beat me. <laughs> so he, he paid for my food. He, he paid me two a dog in Putin, and uh, I I roll it in and I destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> How long? How long after you ate it? Oh, right away. I finished. Let's go. Even oh, no warm up. I just go. Boom. So we're going to have to get you one of these one chunk challenges here from our, our sponsor. These guys, they do like hot, hot stuff. It's uh, like uh, a ghost, ghost pepper. Do you like hot stuff? No, that, that, not that before, but not that much anymore. The, this, I feel like it's hard for me to digest now. Like, I feel like going to say, you, you drink, take one of those and then go roll, and that'll be another Next. step up for you. Me, it's like a hamburger, like make or something like that, like boom, boom and you go fast. Jeez, man. Or don't, don't know, it's like, uh, oh, it's hard, like every day, sugar. And but because I don't like really much to, to cook, or I'm, I'm too much a simple, like that. Maybe that's why I don't I like diet. Like, I'm so strict, like, I'm saying, like, I just put my chicken, my vegetable, and everything. So when I don't have to cook, I just buy something on, on my way. <laughs> Candy. So bad. I, I'm not a like I'm not a good example. Like seriously, like it's hard, but though. my buddy, like I feel for me, my buddy, it's good with that. I feel very yeah. good. With it. Everybody's different too, right? Like yeah. man, like I, I know a lot. Like I know some people, some pretty high level jujitsu guys that came to our, my show through the years, like our grappling shows we used to, who would only eat candy, the day of the fight, like the day of their grappling match, they'd only eat candy, and I'm like. Fuck, like, not, but this is this is even even like worse than me. <laughs> no man, it's like Swedish feet or what do you call those Swedish berries or something? Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. just jamming those things all day, right? But everybody's different. But I think to compete, like you're like you said, you're 26 and now like you switch that now, yeah, right? Yeah, so, like I try to be better. But yeah. for sure, like, I have some uh, up and down. <laughs> well, but it's but like it's you said, and you got to enjoy life. You yeah, know, it is. Like, it is very know. important. Like Saint Saint Laurent Street's not going to enjoy itself. I, know <laughs> that. I used to work at Buonanotte. What is, what is this? I don't know if I don't know if it's there anymore. Up on Saint Laurent in Montreal. I don't, so, I don't know what it is. Well, oh, the street. You don't know the street? Yeah, Saint I know the street Saint Laurent. Yeah, it's but like uh, it's called uh, it's called Buonanotte, but it, it, Globe. Do you know Globe? Uh, no. They're like these fucking super high-end restaurants that I would never afford to go eat at, but I worked there as like a, it's like a busboy and, and a bartender when I li I lived in Montreal for a little while, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a pretty yeah, fun place. Yeah, that's for sure. Like it's uh, like it's always a life you, when you go at night at night because me uh, in Laval it's pretty like uh, it's quiet at seven. They are, everybody is like is in their house and. Uh, like and there is supper, and, but after that, like when I go like to Montreal and everything like that, like I can leave the the gym at eleven o'clock and uh, I go outside and they have more people than uh, I, I yeah. go on the street normally. <laughs> yeah, it's, 
It's Montreal is a fun city. One of my favorite cities in the world. I think Faber and all these, I think they're all chirping you here. I can't, I don't yeah. speak French. But so I, like, you, see me, you see me eat after fights and things like that. <laughs> this is I, bad for me. <laughs> he's great. Faber is a, yeah. Like what a good guy. A very good guy. Good podcast too. Like I, it's a, I think it's the first guy I, I went on, uh, on his show. And it was so nice. Like he, like I was very comfortable. Like with you, it's very nice. It's easy to talk, and uh, it's the way it should be, man. I'm not. Yeah, here to, it it's like Faber. He's not there to sugarcoat or fool anybody. He's just himself. He's just real, right? And yeah. That's the way. Like I find a lot of like, I find a lot of people in this business, like promoters and shit. They're so fake, man. Like who are you trying to kid, dude? Like take off your blazer. Yeah. You're not that important. But you say like in the in the like in this world, but I, like just in general, like they have so many people like uh, you, you know, like they're not like uh, they're fake or uh, it's so easy. Like I feel like for me in the like in MMA too, like in fighter, like it's so how many people they gonna say like I'm a very good fighter and they, they never fought and everything like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. The same thing. No, like that's it, man. You can be like if. You can be a good fighter all you like, man. But if you can go on one sparring session at TriStar, go do one sparring. Well, go do one advanced jujitsu class. Yeah, that's like, that you are. Thing. like they have like uh, how I can say lane <laughs> levels. Oh yeah. No, yeah, they have level to this. You know, like uh, someone said to me, uh, uh, jujitsu competition was the same thing as a fight. I was like, it's mm. different because. The, the risk is different, you know? Totally different. <laughs> and the, the, I, the, just, the, the, just the fact that you can get knocked out, change yeah. everything. They're For not me, the same thing. Yeah. No. no. Because you, you, if, if it was the same thing, you were, you, 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 you're going to be in the aspiring class. And yeah, that's, that's why you're not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, it's funny because people always said to me, like, why don't you do combat jujitsu after we stop doing our grappling events? They're like, you know, because I was uh, the goal for us was always to get into MMA, okay. you know, but we wanted to do these sub series pro grappling events and, and like pay per view shows to learn what we were doing and eventually get into MMA. And people are like, why don't you do combat jujitsu? Like, promote that. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I why don't you just do MMA if you're gonna do combat jujitsu? Like, For me, I feel it's almost like it's the same thing. Like right. you, you just it's it's ground and pound. And uh, yeah. if someone hits me with this part of their hand, that's not gonna feel good. No. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, really... like, how, how you drill that? Bob's rooting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't. I guess. Yeah. Stay right there while I blast yeah. your face with the palm. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, I think MMA is, I always, and I use this analogy a lot, like jujitsu events are fun. You know, wrestling's fun. Kickboxing's fun. Everything's fun. But why watch BMXing when you can watch motocross? And that's yeah. what I always like. Motocross is more exciting. So you're always going to gravitate to MMA because it's the best of everything. The, yeah. the, the masses are, I think, right? But they have something, uh, you know, um, how I can say, they have something special. Like, it's so so much everything together that, like, uh, you never know what's, what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes, like, you, you, a matchup for me, it's very good. And for you, the same matchup is going to be the your worst nightmare. Yeah, totally. No, so, I couldn't agree more. That's the yeah, beauty of this that's why it makes uh, things exciting. When my friends come to my show, like they like, they know I'm good, but you you never know. You still gonna have that the stress that something can happen because like like it's like you you don't want me to lose too, but like it's it, it can happen. Even like if uh, I should winning or something like that, you still gonna have the stress. Like uh, yeah, that's it for sure. Yeah. You know, you, even you, you never know what's gonna happen. <sighs> Man, when you go like me, like, I, every time, like I like I go like just before I go for a fight, like a lot of time when you're like in the backstage and you 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 know like you you warm up a little bit, like start like put yourself in it. Yeah. You always have sometimes the small like, the small um the like a small words in your in your mind yeah. and you say why you do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm always amazed at that. But then the, you guys can go in and girls too. I, I hate to say guys, but you know, athletes that can go in there and be like, just turn that switch. And you, you still have those fear and you still have those nerves, but you channel it, you know? Yeah. So then you go out there and you're like, now it's time. But now it's crazy. Sometimes like, I see like uh, myself, like, uh, like uh, Meton, example, when you're in the, the cage and they, they call your name, I'm like, I know when I when I'm there, I'm like, oh, I'm stressed. I'm very stressed. And when I see there, I look like ready to go and scream like in front of the camera. I'm ready to go. Let's go. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> why? Why I do this? <laughs> it's funny, you know. But that's but, that's what makes a professional athlete. The people who can go in and perform and call, like no, bottle that shit up. That's man. That's that's what separates. I, yeah, it is. Men but, the boys or the women from the girls, right? But it, the the things too, it's like it, it goes so fast. For me, for my example, I feel like it always go fast. And uh, you know, sometimes like uh, when you have to do something, like this is how I feel. I'm like, okay, I should do that. I'm already do it. You know, like I say, let's go, Fred. Let's do it. It's time. Uh, just like let's go. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm just like, and uh, for me, I uh, when they, the the ring bell, I'm I'm not. Thinking like oh I should take my time like uh, I'm not pay for the all for the all fifteen that's minutes right. like, I'm just go in and go out and that's it like for me I do everything I can for sure to win I'm ready to do uh, to do this but for me uh, let's go like uh, you can see like even uh, all my fight like it's all, attack, all, all attack, attack. it's pretty fast like in, uh, before like even like my loss like uh like I have two fight like with my amateur like I got like uh second round but all the time like it's first round and uh, pretty quick yeah you yeah, know you're like super, very versatile like you you yeah. move very well that's and that's what to be honest like that's what as a promoter that's what you want oh, yeah, um, yeah. I, you know yeah, i want yeah, everyone you to like have style, you know? <laughs> well you want action right i want yeah. people who are going to be fun to watch and, oh, and man, sell I, fight. But me I, like i told you like i go there i go for finish like yeah. I, it's going like I, I don't I'm not there to play. I'm yeah. very like like I I don't know like this is maybe that's why I it's hard for me to have opponent like because yeah. I, I like at one thirty five I was not like I was big but like I make sure like if I go one forty five I'm not the smallest one forty five like nice. uh, like at one forty five I look like very huge. <laughs> Well, that's good, man. Who who knows what's gonna happen? You know, we we're still waiting on. Uh, we're 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 praying. We're praying yeah. that we're gonna be able to get something going here in twenty twenty. I, I hope so, man. It's just just to have something like uh, like it, it create a little bit of hope. You know, like you're just like, oh yeah, I hope like they're gonna have something. Exactly. If we can't do it, then we we're, we have a couple other things we're working on too to keep moving forward. By all means, we're we're like certainly. What? Well, we can't say just yet. We can't say just yet. It's we're working on it behind the scenes, and hopefully, if if we can't put events on for the rest of the 2020, then we're probably going to move forward with that. It'll be combat sports related. It'll give people a chance to compete, but uh, just in a different way, I guess. I can't really I say. But like, I, like I'm curious now. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. There's always more, you know. It's but it's for us. It's like. You have to be careful because you never want to upset the commission because we don't want to lose our license, obviously. But you and safety too. We don't want to be responsible. We have no cases out here for two weeks again. But I think the way we can do things, the way the safety that we can provide to the athletes, I think there's no way. If they won't let us do an event, then the, what we're going to pull off, I think, may even be bigger than an event. Oh so, shit! Who knows? I'm gonna be. Uh, I gonna. I'm gonna look. I yeah, like, yeah. Sure. maybe we can even get you involved. You know, I know there's lots of people wanting to get out here and, and compete, and you know, maybe after that, you, maybe you can send me a message about it. Like I will be ready for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing, man. We're 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 staying ready, and and we'll know tonight, hopefully, uh, or, or tomorrow at the latest. Hopefully, what's going on. So stay tuned, man. And uh, I got to thank you very much for joining us. Right. Uh, Thanks, it's man. great, great conversation you seem like a fantastic guy a fantastic athlete that's for sure right. Thanks. so uh any that's advice for very, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry sorry go ahead 
Yeah, uh, thanks you for the invitation. It was very nice. Like, at, you're very easy flowing, and uh, it's pretty cool. Like, it's the first time I'm talking to you, and uh, I really like it. Hey, man, thank you. It's the uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. You just I have no ego. I'm just a guy who likes MMA and happens to put on events and does jujitsu and. But it's a, like you know, it's a common passion. When you, you talk with someone like like the same thing as you, it, it's not even uh, it's not even like like if you're fighting or not. Like it's just like you're an MMA fan. I'm a I I'm a, even before I am a professional fighter, I'm a fan of the yeah. sport. Yeah, really exactly. like it. Yeah, yeah, and that's so, why you're in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it, man. That's it. it's common goals. You know, it's it's you don't have to. I don't know. I think love, man, more love in this world, more compassion, being a good person. I think that it's a huge, huge thing. So yeah. keep, keep leading the way, man. Keep being a great athlete. And uh, hopefully we can get you out here, buddy. I hope so. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks again. Stay, yeah, man. stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yes. All right. There you have it, folks. Frederick Dupree. Dupre. I'm butchering his name. I'm sorry. I'll fix that. Frederick Dupre. By the next episode, I'll get it. I'm having a little trouble here, but uh, at least I'm uh, I'm going forward with it. I'll try. I'll try my best. Faber, if you're watching, you can make fun of me. Maybe you can do a podcast, and I can pronounce the names in English. You can pronounce them in French, and we can. Anyway, uh, a great show. Two fantastic gems uh, of the scene there up in Quebec, uh, both in Gatineau and in Laval. Um, you know, those guys are people that you should be following you know if you're if you're an mma fan in canada that that's what it's about you know that that small grassroots community that we have here in canada we're here to support one another whether we're a promotion fighter cameraman uh ring card person whatever you happen to be you know be kind to one another in the sport and, and share one another stuff sponsor people if you can that are friends of yours or whatever man but uh just keep being a good person you know it's uh if you the famous last words we always have out here if you can be anything in this world it's it's be kind and it's super important especially now so anyway folks we'll be back tomorrow night with another episode uh i believe i have no idea who's on tomorrow night anyway we'll be back tomorrow night thanks for joining us and we'll see you then lots of love see ya thanks for tuning in and make sure to hit that subscribe button as always thanks to our friends and sponsors without you None of this is possible.